Coming up in today's episode, I'm sniping squirrels in the woods. Little did I know, I was in for a record-breaking day. A few days prior to shooting the squirrel feeder and I've come for a recce mission and I brought my rifle with me just to make sure that it's sighted in at the right distance. For those people that can't wait, the squirrel action starts at 3.50 in this video. Well, I'm not actually here to shoot the feeder today. I've brought the rifle because I came with the intention of sighting in to make sure it was accurate enough. I'm going to come and shoot this on Monday. I noticed the feed has been going down quite a lot. Now when I got here, there was actually a fat wood pigeon sat on the feeder. But I've just spent 20 minutes, half an hour in the hide. And there has just been four squirrels on the feeder. So no wonder the nuts are going down. So I'm going to come back here on Monday and shoot it then. There's still one on the feeder. So I'm quite hopeful for a good bag on Monday. Got to be at least four, isn't it? Right, well, let's make sure the ATN is working well. And let's skip forward to Monday. So having observed the squirrels for a while, I'll put a five shot group into the target. I've got a couple of days rain ahead of me, but Monday looks good enough to come and shoot. Well, that's a five shot group. Not too much wrong with that, I think that'll do. the hide having been in place for over a year, all I usually have to take is my chair and my gun. Having said that, when you're filming, you've got quite a bit of camera equipment and bits and bobs to set up and this actually takes more time than anything else at the minute. The actual pellets I'm using in today's episode I've changed from my usual air arms over to the JSB Exacts. These pellets have phenomenal grouping. The way I set it up is I actually put 9 in the 10 shot magazine leaving the 10th chamber empty and feed the empty chamber first without fully cocking the rifle. That way I'm not leaving the rifle cocked um, and loaded so uh, not until I see the first squirrel will I actually need to get ready. Coming up in uh, the next episode, I've been out on Fox Patrol and we catch Charlie red-handed, so make sure you stick around for that one. Well, good morning, and a special good morning to Sean Hammond from York. Looking very fetching there in your Team Foxer hoodie there, mate. We've had a wet couple of days, and today's the first dry day, so I'm quite hopeful that stuff should be out feeding quite early. But it's not even six o'clock yet, so the lights now just started coming through. Once I'd got everything set up and in position, it was less than 10 minutes before the first inquisitive little squirrel came down to the feeder. He spent a few minutes milling around and thinking it over before he actually settled to feed. I guess the introduction of a new camera staring down on him um, put him off at first, but it seemingly did the trick and this squirrel soon settles to start his morning breakfast. So 
Now I'm going to put a little bit of information in the video's description as to why the grey squirrel needs controlling here in the UK. But for now I'm just going to talk for a second about shot placement. This is the perfect position for a squirrel to be in. Broadside shot and the area of interest for us is this brain um, area. We're looking to switch the lights out straight away so the brain sits just behind the eye and before the ear. As you can see that pellet there sends this one tumbling to the ground. It's pretty much dead on arrival. There will be the odd nervous kick and twitch um, as the muscle uh, electrodes fire away um, but it is lights out for that grey. As you could probably hear there, the rifle itself is silent. The biggest noise is actually the pellet cracking the skull. It's not uncommon at this time of year for family groups to be out feeding, as we saw in the early footage in my uh, recce mission here, three or four squirrels will come down and feed at the same time, although they do have a pecking order as displayed here. This squirrel that's feeding clearly is the more dominant uh, and he's not too keen on the other squirrel waiting too close, disturbing his feeding pattern. I knew this would be the case, so I just gave it a few minutes of waiting patiently uh, before the other squirrel knew the pecking order and this one was settled with a nut in the mouth, again in the broadside shot position. Squirrel number three there actually dropped his nut while feeding and rather than come down and take another one straight away I guess the two bodies on the floor below were putting him off slightly. I used the Pulsar Accolade Thermal to keep track on it with the foliage being quite thick at the minute it's quite difficult to see and whilst I was watching that one another one had come from the forest floor up to the feeder uh, and settled straight into feed however this one actually facing away from me proved a little bit trickier so I'm having to judge uh, the shot placement here from just over the shoulder. But within the first 15 minutes of getting set up that's number three on the deck. That one did actually flick further off to the left behind those leaves there. Squirrel number four is actually still up the tree and you can see it very clearly here through the thermal and as he makes his way down the tree and stops in that V there for just a second or two he actually leaves a thermal signature on the tree which is pretty cool. Squirrel number four showing quite a bit of interest in the camera and eventually settles to feed once again facing away from me. But it's not long and uh, patience is the aim of the game with squirrels 
uh, before he turns around and I send a pellet straight into the brain box. As a gentle gust of wind passes through the woods, things in the hide are quite comfortable as a nest-robbing, nut-stealing jay comes down to rob a few nuts and quickly go away. These are also big problem birds here in the UK, but this one lives to fight another day. Well, that was a bit of a bonus. We didn't have to wait very long at all for squirrels number three and number four. I'm sure there's one or two more here though, so I'm going to hold out for a bit longer and see if we can't nab those as well. But right now, it's time for a brew. <laughs> If anyone's interested in the hide setup and how it's constructed, again I'll put a link in the video's description on how to build a squirrel hide. Once it's been in position uh, for several months, the squirrels and native woodland wildlife will just get used to feeding in and around it. So much so, and as you can see here on my recce mission, we had squirrels within metres, probably less than that. Uh, and almost in touching distance of the hide here as I sat here with my daughter days prior to the shooting and filmed this one just milling around on the forest floor. Now the last time I shot I had several squirrels that got very wary and skittish because of the dead ones on the floor. So I made a point during this session to go out when it was convenient and pick up every shot squirrel that I had. Some of the eagle-eyed amongst you may have noticed since the last session here, they've actually put some pipe lagging on top of the hide here, just to help protect the bottom of the rifle a little. As I just get settled back in the hide, arriving there within seconds, I start to notice a squirrel coming in from the left of the tree, although I hadn't cocked the rifle so I very gingerly had to cock it before settling in to take this shot. And that was number five on the deck in clinical fashion. Now, I was about to go and retrieve that squirrel, so I just got up from the back of the hide when I spotted squirrel number six on the tree, and I wasn't too sure whether he saw me or not, so I quickly got back in the hide and started filming. Now, what you'll notice here with this squirrel is the constant flicking of the tail, so it's clearly agitated. Um, so it was at this point I decided that it probably had seen me. Now, this squirrel went up and down the tree um, and it actually took seven minutes, so I've edited this clip down quite considerably, but it kept going up, coming down, shifting position. He did come down once more, 
uh, and made the fatal mistake of staying in the static position for a little too long. So I broke my usual routine and actually took this squirrel on one of the supporting branches. And like I said, patience is the aim of the game when squirrel shooting, and I've been pretty patient with that one. But as you saw, he kept his head static for a matter of seconds, and that was long enough for me to send him crashing to the floor. Now this squirrel here is the only one of the day that I didn't catch perfectly cleanly uh, with the first shot, as you'll see. It did die, uh, but it needed a follow-up shot. How many is that now? No, I can't. What? Seven, seven, seven. No, do it again. No, you don't need it again, Marjorie. It was seven. So here's the overhead cam shot of the squirrel just now. So as you can see, it wasn't clean. Um, it was actually through the neck, but I gave it a follow-up shot as soon as I could, just a matter of seconds later. Here it is from my view. So as you saw there, as soon as it was possible to do so, I took the follow-up shot. There then ensued the longest wait of the morning so far, before squirrel number 8 finally made an appearance. And squirrel number 8 has brought a little youngster along with him. Now, much like the other squirrel that I'd seen pause on this branch, this one seemed to look straight at me. So I thought, well, if you're staring at me, mate, you're getting it. I certainly noticed that that other squirrel didn't hang around long at all. He soon went round the back of the tree. Just look in this next clip at just how fast this squirrel makes it from the floor round to the rear of the tree. But less than three minutes later, squirrel number nine is hungry enough to sit on the feeder and he goes the same way as his brothers and sisters before him. We're now up to nine. Well, we've done it. We've reached double digits on the squirrels. Ten squirrels. And it's not even 8.30 in the morning. Really goes to show that the early bird really does catch the worm.
So 11 and 12 came and went. I text the keeper to tell him I had a cracking morning and would he like to come and collect them because he feeds them to his ravens and other birds of prey. As he came and joined me in the hide, squirrel number 13 came and hung on the tree, quite literally. By far the most dramatic and graphic shot of the day, as you can see here. And with a nice spray of eye juice, that concluded the session. Well done. Well, we're packing up for the day now. What a morning. A new record for me. Hope you enjoyed it. Well, unlucky for them, it was 13 in the bag. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did and you're stopping by for the first time and you want to, please consider subscribing. For now, take care, stay safe, and as always, happy shooting. Well, I've just finished on the one feeder. Come to check this one. Looks like we're going to have another video on our hands.